Here on this channel, I've spoken a lot to the strengths of Xbox, but today we're shaking it up. This one's for you, PlayStation fans. What's up guys, Cameron here, and if you haven't already, please hit that like button, it helps me out a bunch, and I greatly appreciate it. So PlayStation over the years has had many strengths going into each generation. Brand respect has always been one of them, and power was one of them going into the PS4 era. But there's one strength that the PlayStation has had since the second half of the PS3's life cycle, and that's games. So today we are going to talk more about the strength of PlayStation going into the PS5, how it started, how it's evolved, and how it will indefinitely sell a ton of PS5s. So during the first half of the PS3's life cycle, the exclusives were few and far between. And even then, they weren't the excellent titles we have come to expect from PlayStation nowadays. Games like MotorStorm, Uncharted, and Resistance Fall of Man were some of the PS3's early exclusive titles. They were viewed decent, but they weren't anything to write home about. Then something happened. Sony was behind in console sales to the 360, which had a ton of great exclusive games. Sony took notice and began investing in their first party titles. And this was the beginning of greatness. When games like Uncharted 2, Resistance 2, MotorStorm Pacific Rift, and Little Big Planet hit the shelves, people paid attention. These games were new and fresh. They were extremely well crafted and incredibly fun. This was the birth of a new PlayStation strategy. Games sell consoles. Since then, games have become PlayStation's strengths. After delivering multiple sequels to their now loved IPs like Uncharted, Resistance, and MotorStorm, PlayStation charged into the PS4 era with all guns blazing. Games like Killzone Shadowfall, Bloodborne, and Infamous Second Son started off the generation, but then things hit a new level. Uncharted 4 blew the minds of over 16 million people, and that was just a taste of what was to come from the PlayStation brand. With the bar now raised, PlayStation made some changes to their games that would ensure a higher quality. Co-op and multiplayer options were all but dropped completely from future titles like Spider-Man, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Days Gone. This allowed the developers to focus on delivering the best single-player experience possible, which in return delivered a higher cinematic quality of a game. Sony's exclusives from Uncharted and on were extremely well polished, focused, and beautifully crafted. There are many benefits to focusing on only one console with one mode. There aren't as many issues to fix or design around, whereas third-party studios usually have to design their games with multiple platforms in mind. Sony's first-party studios don't have this issue. They focus solely on the PS4 and solely on single-player, an entire workforce focused on delivering a high-quality, extremely polished exclusive. And that is exactly what they did. Not only did they focus their teams, but they also introduced new IP over the generation. Games like Bloodborne and Horizon Zero Dawn. With Horizon Zero Dawn coming from the creators of Killzone, people were interested, but skeptical. Horizon's setting was unlike anything we had ever seen. I mean, Robot Dinosaurs doesn't exactly tickle my fancy. But when it released, it once again blew everyone away. Robot Dinosaurs were cool now, and Horizon has become one of the most loved IPs of the generation. A few years after Horizon's release, Sony once again raised the bar with Marvel Spider-Man. Now you would think an exclusive for PlayStation with the name Spider-Man on it would have done well anyways, but it was so much more than that. Spider-Man has always been a beloved character by millions around the globe, but what Insomniac Games was able to achieve with this game was unreal. Not only did they craft a game that made you feel like Spider-Man, but they created a beautiful story, full of characters to love and feel for. The game played every note perfectly, from fighting against unimaginable odds to the tear-jerking moments to come later in the story. Spider-Man was more than just a cash grab with the Spider-Man IP. It was an incredible game. How could things possibly get better? And then they did, with the release of God of War. God of War was already a beloved IP from the PlayStation library, but its formula was beginning to wear thin. So under the leadership of Corey Barlog, the team at Sony Santa Monica began to develop a new take on the God of War franchise. The changes that were made were bold and really risky. God of War was made into a third-person, over-the-shoulder action RPG. This worried some longtime God of War fans, but attracted a whole new audience. People like myself were interested in the franchise for the first time. When the game finally released, it was met with universal praise, somehow managing to please old fans and new alike. 
it was a bold new take on an old IP that has now laid the groundwork for many more sequels. What's really amazing about God of War though is how it took a hard, cold killer like Kratos and gave him a sense of humanity. Having left his old life behind for a wife and son, you feel for him immediately when his wife passes away at the beginning of the game. His struggles with his past and wanting to move on from it are very relatable. But what really struck a chord with me through this game is the father and son relationship between Kratos and Atreus. When this game released, my son was only a few months old, so the protectiveness over Atreus and the rage Kratos releases in order to keep his son safe was very understandable. The worries he has over his son making the same mistakes he did make it feel all too real. God of War was able to deliver the high intense action it's known for, while also somehow delivering meaningful emotional moments through its plot. God of War is nothing short of a masterpiece. Before I move on, I want to at least acknowledge the other two big exclusives on the PS4, The Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. Both these games seem to have sold well, but I haven't played either one of them. The Last of Us 2 lost all my interest after seeing the leaks early on. The decisions that were made in that game, I just couldn't get behind. As far as Ghost of Tsushima goes, I want to play it badly, but I'm waiting to play it on my PS5. It will give me something to play on the PS5 besides Spider-Man this fall, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. Looking forward towards the PS5, we know what Sony is able to deliver. These beautiful, action-packed, and amazing stories will be a regular occurrence through the generation. Sony knows its games are what sell consoles, and I expect many sequels to head our way. We already know Horizon Forbidden West is coming soon, a God of War sequel is in the works, and so is more Spider-Man games. Spider-Man Miles Morales launches this fall with the PS5, and it looks to bridge the gap between Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. Sony clearly has no plans on slowing down its studios that are producing first party titles, so the PS5 will see a loaded library of great single player story driven games. Which is great, but it also brings me to some of my hopes for the PlayStation this time around. Single player games are great, and I play a lot of them, but I feel like Sony neglected everything else this past gen. The PS4 exclusives were nothing but single player until recently when Ghost of Tsushima added a co-op mode. Once again, I love a good single player story, especially to the caliber that PlayStation delivers, but I really miss the PS3 days. The exclusives during the PS3 era were incredible as well, but they also shipped with split screen co-op and multiplayer modes. I spent countless hours playing Resistance 3 in split screen co-op. Uncharted 3 added split screen co-op as well, and I absolutely adored that game. The moments that could happen, a hard hitting fist fight would take place, then you jump straight into a firefight. That game was an incredible co-op experience. Motorstorm Pacific Rift was like a Mario Kart for adults. That's probably a bad analogy, being I still play Mario Kart, but it was freaking fun. What happened to Motorstorm? Forza Horizon on the Xbox is unmatched by PlayStation. Motorstorm could be that game. People praise the PS4 for its exclusives like it was the best they've ever been, but I would argue the PS3 had better exclusives. My hope for this generation and PlayStation is that they will continue to deliver the big single player games like I know they will, but also revive some of your old IP. Bring back Resistance, Motorstorm, and Uncharted. Can you imagine a PS5 lineup like that? God of War 2, Spider-Man 2, Motorstorm rebooted, Resistance 4, Uncharted 5? I mean, good lord, if that was the PS5 lineup, I would be spending a lot more time on my PS5 this gen, no doubt. PlayStation's strengths? is its games. These games are what sell PlayStation consoles. It's the reason I buy a PlayStation every generation alongside my Xbox. And the beauty of this gen is the two SKUs that PlayStation and Xbox are offering. Someone like me has a cheaper option. I'm buying an Xbox Series X day one and I'll be picking up the PS5 Digital Edition as well. This is genius by both companies for many reasons. For one, offering a cheaper model attracts folks on a budget but it also makes it easier for those of us that plan on buying both. The cheaper model of the PS5 gives me a cheaper entry point into the Sony library. This also works with the Xbox Series S. If you are a PlayStation-centric gamer, but want to play Halo, Fable, or Forza when it comes out, you can pick up the cheap Xbox and have access to all those games. This was a genius idea by PlayStation and Xbox both, and I can't wait to play them very soon. Well, that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. Sometimes it's just fun to talk games. If you haven't already, please hit that like button. It helps me a ton and I greatly appreciate it. Also, follow me on Twitter at GodsGeeksYT. That's GodsGeeksYT. And before I go, I gotta let you know. I love you, I appreciate you, and I hope you have a great week.
Later, guys.